2007 was a crazy fun and busy year for Delaware Racing, for the show, and for me. And I didn't know if there's anything you wanted to tell the viewers. No. You're pregnant. <laughs> <laughs> you not, you're not supposed to act surprised. Oh, you're pregnant. Yeah, yeah. I started getting big, and then bigger, and well, as you can see, even bigger. And in July, the newest addition to harness racing was born. While I was producing the miracle of life, post time didn't miss a beat. You know what they say, the show must go on. And well, it did, with a little help from my friends. My niece Taylor took over the microphone on Governor's Cup Day and did a great job showing us all the excitement from the fair. Sharon Kirby stepped in on Hambletonian Day for some home movies. We got to see a Delaware invasion happen at the Meadowlands on this first Saturday in August. Sharon let the world know about my new little bundle of joy. Uh, welcome Trey William Hoffman and best of luck. And she showed where the best seat in the house is on Hambo Day. You know, I wasn't the only one having babies. Delaware Superstar and 2004 Horse of the Year, Rainbow Blue, gave birth to a bouncing baby boy. And poor George Teague, just when he thinks he's going to have a nice quiet lunch, yours truly shows up to talk about Baby Blue. We also took a trip to Nandy Farm in Pennsylvania, where pacing mayor Shakeaway had a surrogate mother, a draft horse named Harriet, help carry her baby. Shakeaway was all for being a mom, but isn't much for taking time off for all that labor and delivery nonsense. She wanted to race, and we heard that straight from the horse's mouth. Let's face it, I'm all that and a bag of chips. In 2007, I had the honor of representing our great sport of harness racing at the Delaware Broadcasters and Writers Banquet in Wilmington. And I had a lot to be proud of. In the beginning of the year, the Dylan Davis trainee, Art Zena, took home the two-year-old pacing colt for all of North America. And the Teak Stable sent out Isabella Blue Chip, who won the two-year-old Philly Pacer of the Year, as well as Total Truth, who beat out every side wheeler in the country to take home Pacer of the Year. As always, we had plenty of educational features on the show, and this year I was really into equipment. We learned about our traditional head checks to keep the head up, and we also learned about the head check that keeps Rattlesnake Jake's head down. Chad Maris told us about knee spreaders and Better Watch Him was watching the winner circle through his mosquito look-alike mask. Every once in a while, we check out a different breed, like when we remembered the amazing thoroughbred Barbaro for his talent and relentless courage. At the Delaware Horse Expo, as long as you loved four-legged animals that said nay, well, you were sure to see something to wow you. Over the past couple of years, driver Ron Pierce has become a favorite on the show. And this season, we got the inside scoop about Ronnie from the woman who knows him best, Mom. Oh, what an adorable child he was. I used to call him my little monkey. We also got a lesson from Ron about what never to do on the racetrack. Kids, don't try this at home. Sometimes I have so much fun with the interviews and features in the show that I forget, yes, we have races too. Like the richest event in Harrington history, the inaugural edition of the Bobby Quillen Memorial. We watched another fantastic edition of the Progress Pace, the signature race from Dover Downs, and we saw Karen Moore pick up a win in the leg of the Mildred Williams Driving Series. The Next Generation came out to Harrington for the Harness Racing Youth League. Plus, we took a little journey via YouTube to Sweden to watch Mr. Muscle Man represent America and compete in the Elite Lop. Some features and interviews that were put together in the post-time production room this year include the story of Eric Davis and his teacher, 
Top Trotter, Stormont North Star. Didn't you just love the story about Michelle Egley and her horse, Southern Art, who went from the racetrack and literally jumped into a new career? We met Demario Williams, who plays football for the Atlanta Falcons and enjoys racing horses as much as sacking quarterbacks. Ashley Ivory told us how the Pacer Cheeseburger got his name. And I also got to interview Hall of Famer Harry Harvey, who won the 1953 Hambletonian. And what year would be complete without a rickshaw rumble? I am so thankful for all the horsemen and women who agree to share their stories and their smiles on post time. But sometimes it's not always easy to get that exclusive interview. I'm either going to have to learn to run a little faster or beg a little harder. Please, Tony Morgan, please do an interview with me. You can be sure that whoever comes on the show, you'll learn something new about them. Because move over, Diane Sawyer. I ask the really important questions. Did you shave your head because Brittany shaved her head? Boxers or briefs? <laughs> briefs. Do you have any tattoos? No. If you could be best friends with either Oprah Winfrey or Bill Gates, who would it be? <laughs> Who's hotter, John Campbell or Cat Man? <laughs> you really need an answer from me? <laughs> the major headline on the show and around the world was when Tim Tetrick rewrote the record books for the most money won by a driver in a single season and having the most wins by a driver in a single season. And you thought it was all because he was talented. He could never have done it without me since I did introduce him to the Delaware delicacy of Scrapple. And you know what the old saying is, never underestimate the power of Scrapple. So was it coincidence or was it the magic of the Scrapple sandwich? It's got to be the Scrapple. It's got to be. As you can see, 2007 was another knockout season on post time. I am looking forward to 2008 also being a fantastic year in first state racing. And we'll make sure that you're part of all the action.